If you spend time in Coal Harbor or the Concord Pacific lands, you have experienced a world that our next guest created. Faced with cleared industrial areas and the dismantled Expo 86, he won a rare opportunity to design large waterfront areas of Vancouver. He brought into being some of the most livable and sustainable neighborhoods in the world. He has looked at urban places from so many perspectives, and it has led him to question the very nature of how we see. Here to give insight into your visual world, please welcome Rick Hulbert. Hi, everybody. My passion is taking what I've learned as an architect and urban designer over the past 45 years and use it to uh, inform my teaching of photography uh, in a way that uh, enriches people's lives through enhanced visual perception. My objective tonight is to uh, try to give you some knowledge that if you embrace, uh, will actually not only improve your photography, but more importantly, will enhance your visual sensibilities. When I was in school, I was taught that there were five human senses. Today, there are 21. But even with 21 senses, between 60 and 85% of all the information that we take in through our senses is through vision. That's pretty impressive. In order to master plan um, a neighborhood, a community, like the North Shore of Falls Creek, it really helps if you understand how people see and perceive and move through the environment. So tonight, I want to uh, chat a little bit about that. I uh, want to tell you that there are two principal kinds of information that you see immediately when you open your eyes. The first is light. Actually, it's spots and slivers of light. I say that because it's not so much the level of brightness that's important. It's the contrast that we see between light and dark. That's what attracts our attention. So when I'm teaching, I actually get the students to start to just look at light. By the way, you shouldn't try this while you're driving, OK? But, but um, the fact is, is that this is the very first element that we see. Of course, as the photograph, if it's a photograph, or if it's a scene that you're looking at unfolds, um, you begin to see the, the reality of what you're looking at. In this case, it's in Havana, Cuba. The second thing that catches our attention when we see are edges, edges of objects, edges of elements. Now, in this particular photograph, I actually use the edges to construct the image. Um, and you have it there. It's, uh, it's Michigan Avenue in Chicago. We actually know now, neuroscience teaches us, that we have specialized neurons in our brain. These are actually nerve cells that see only horizontal edges. We have specialized neurons that only see vertical edges. And we have specialized neurons that only see oblique or diagonal edges. Guess which ones fire first? Which ones make the most impact on your, uh, in your vision? Well, it's not the uh, oblique and it's not the horizontal edges. It's the vertical edges. Knowing that might affect how you photograph or how you transmit information. What happens next is that the edges combine to make what scientists call figural primitives. A figural primitive is a more complex object that we recognize. Once we learn it, we can recognize it anywhere. A chair is a figural primitive. But the strongest figural primitive is a human form, a body, a face. Whether it's the back or the front, it's amazing. If there's, an, if, if there's a human in your image, be, be it ever so small, uh, or just lit from one side, you sense it immediately. This is true whether you are in a sunny area, like uh, in this case, Antigua, Guatemala. It's true 
if you're on a cloudy, you're in a cloudy day in, uh, uh, in this case, Granville Island, uh, Vancouver. The next thing that happens is, is kind of cool. It's, um, it's our ability to sense volumetric space. Now, for architects, this is a big deal because what architects do is we create envelopes or spaces or behavioral settings for people and their activities. Indoors, architecture. Outdoors, urban design. Um, this particular image was taken in Berlin, Germany. It's the inside of a, uh, of a train station, a four-level train station. And as you can see, the, the attempt here is to take the various figural primitives, put them juxtapose them in a way where they create this sense of space. Because here's the deal. We're looking at a three-dimensional world, and we're going to transpose it onto a two-dimensional canvas or screen. That's the challenge, but that's exciting. Next, and finally, I want to show you a, 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 a fantastic uh, building outside of London, England. I, I visited here because I, I give workshops in different cities, and I always get there a little early, and I take some take some images. The first image I want to show you is of the interior, and it is a very narrow angle of view. Why am I doing this? Because, you know, we only can see clarity in a two-degree angle of view. That's all. What happens is that our eyes are constantly scanning the scene. That's called saccadic eye movement. It is uncontrollable. What happens is your brain takes these little vignettes that are clear, stitches them all together, and gives us the illusion that we're looking at the whole scene all at once. In fact, it's sequential. Quite, quite cool. So if we, if we step back now from this, we can start to see the enormity of this cathedral. It's actually a 400-foot deep nave. And uh, I will admit to you that I got so close to the font in the foreground that the uh, remote control cord on my camera was baptized, if I can say it that way. <laughs> I hesitated to talk about a religious experience like that. But in, in, in any event, the final thing I want to say is this. When you get a chance, look up. Um, when, when it's safe to do so, look up. And uh, sometimes you're rewarded. In this case, with this lens that I have that uh, uh, has a 180 degree angle of view, uh, and I can see, looking straight up, I can see the front and the back of the church, 400 feet long. Um, now for me, when I'm standing here and I'm looking up and I'm looking at this image, I'm standing between two pipe organs, two choir lofts, and I can actually hear, um, uh, I guess we'll call it London's version of our own Corleone. And on that note, I want to thank you.